two back on the water. Uh, not sure what we're doing, but we got calm we're gonna seas. Do it. We're gonna do it. <laughs> We're gonna, place we're gonna fill the cooler, there. fill the freezer, and fill the fish cooler, empty the drink cooler. That's Got right. It. Got a, one mission. Got a couple less people today. Um, still solid crew. Dawson Captain running, running captain today. Captain Mike, he's relaxing. He needs to put a fish in the box. I gotta save so my energy for lobsters. And get him ready. Keep my crown. Colton wearing the pickle pants. He's ready to go. Oh, the it's single pants charm. Are magic pants, aren't they? And we got Big Kiara, who's still uh, trying to shoot the biggest fish of the trip. <laughs> so, we probably got about 15, 20 miles to wherever we're going. Hopefully, we'll find some weeds, maybe some birds, and uh, old, rod holders, ultimately some fish. So, but just so you know, this is the commute when uh, you're in Key Colony. All these houses, um, they've got great dock space right out back of the houses. It's an awesome place to stay if you really want to play in the Keys. Um, tie your boat up, leave all your stuff on it through the night. It's really safe. It's a great little island community. And uh, all the places, as you can see from the map here, um, finger canals that kind of go back and everything leads right out either into the bay or to the ocean so it's pretty awesome so we got this uh simrad i don't know if we've talked about this before but we've been running this uh go 7 uh, sxr i think it is it's just another uh, navigation tool and we get chips that give us really good graphics and an understanding of what's on the bottom um, so obviously we got our, our standard garmin stuff you know and it has a fish finder and it shows you the bottom a little bit but this is kind of a 3d map so it really um you know when you're when you're going out and you're looking for spots you can kind of see what the bottom looks like a lot of a lot of structure when there's boulders and ledges and shelves and stuff that's going to show it on that simrad and then uh we pull up on it put the spot anchor in and get in there and either shoot some fish or hook them up so that's the lesson for this morning simrad go seven SXR, I think it is. Um, Seymour, Seymour Maps, they sell some really good cards with a uh, great bottom. Uh, so check it out. Check it out. Uh, it'll definitely make your, make your fishing much more efficient so you don't have to just drive around aimlessly looking for stuff. They've got a lot of great spots in there to help, help make it efficient. That's the goal. Out here jigging the 409 humps, vertical jig. Johnny Jig, Big Mike's hooked up. Alright, Jiggy. Nice little Amberjack. Tiny. Oh. Dudo. Oh. I'm getting Almaca, actually. Oh, I don't really know. Yeah. Here, hold on. Here we are. About the 15th that, drift, that, that's finally hooked up. It's a tuna. I'm gonna Dawson's us, got right. a tuna, he's cranking it in. He's just gonna spin us. I, I, I can tell the shakes. Just back up, back up. He's spinning us. Are you backing up? Yeah. There you go. Captain Mike turning the boat around. It's gotta be the tuna. Where that's shaking. I just, may have you gotta move that rod still, Karen, in case he has I to think, go. I think you might be hooked on. Oh, you already have it. That, that okay. ball. The ball. The ball buster. <laughs> oh, where is it? Up top, it's probably. It's under the seat, I think. Still good ways down. Don't see any color. Sit it there and just crank the. I am. Yeah. You don't gotta flex the rod. Right yeah, just put your put it on your knee, dude, and just crank that reel. That's that's what that's designed for. You don't gotta do any work on the reel on the rod. Just keep cranking. That's it. Just keep steady cranking. But it's not turning. Well, then we gotta tighten the drag will, will a little bit. No, no, you, I gotta tighten pretty tight. <laughs> but we got nothing but time unless it gets charged. But... I think it did. No, it, did. it got twice as hard. No. Yeah, but it didn't break, so keep getting it up. All you do is that with that drag is on your thumb, you just like that that big like captain's wheel. All you just just a little little tiny. Oh no! All I did was just two two clicks. Yeah, yeah. Just you just one, and you know, feel it. And is he still pulling line? Yeah. 
Oh, there's a big boy. Yeah, yeah, it is a big boy. It is a big boy. Fish? Yeah, yeah. it's a fish. Like tuna? It looks like a tuna. It's silver. I don't know if it's AJ or tuna. I haven't seen it at all. I mean, I got Brian's going in for the gaff job. Tuna? Big tuna. Turn it this way. Trying to get that camera big angle tuna, up in there. Oh, black fin. Yep, nice one. Big tuna. Hold up, hold it. Yep, let him pinwheel. I know. Nice, that's our biggest one ever. That's what's no, no, this one is. Oh my gosh, that is a big one. Not hooked I told you. Switch it to a smaller shot. Hold on, hold on. No, no, I know, I know. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it unless I got a good shot. Hold up. Should we put it in gear a little bit? Maybe Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. Do that and drag him. Go forward. Oh. It's barely hooked. Oh my gosh. Gossip, you got your own fish. I get it, I get it. Oh, it's not through, it's not through. Get him in, get him in, get him in, swing it, swing it, swing it. Yeah! That's a big one. That's a gaff shot, bro. First fish on the boat, baby. Yee, yeah, here we are. <clears throat> Brian's hooked up. Hold on, hold on. Oh, you said back there? On the one drop SPJ. On the one drop on the first drop? Is that a Johnny Jig one drop? Johnny Jig, one drop, 220 gram. There she is, it's dropping deep, yeah, oh, 400 feet I, down. I, I gaffer, I guess. No, my time, I'm up. I don't know, I'm that, I think I am the best gaffer. Mm. All right, no. you remember the last YouTube video? <laughs> the last year's trip? I gaffed it. I did. I'm the best did gaffer. Did I miss fish and the gaff? Did I miss it? He's definitely swimming up. I got him turned up. Is he close? I don't yeah. see any color yet. I'll be ready. He's not that big. You, is he a swinger? Unless he's just swimming up. A little, little black fin, hopefully. Yeah, it's definitely black fin. Oh, he's getting heavier now. <laughs> mine, I'm telling you, mine didn't seem that big, and then he turned it on. Dude, hit me in the face. Dawson's gonna go in for the gaff. <laughs> the gaffing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yep. It's an amberjack. Is it? AJ. What the heck? Is oh, my God. What is it? It's a yellow white snapper. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's a what? Yeah. You're on the bottom. Yeah. He's I on the bottom. I told you I was. Woo. Hey, this is a yellow white snapper. He's already Coated on the 220 one drop Johnny Jig. Shimano Ocean Jigger. I think I was, what, five, four hundred and some feet down. Water feet. Wasn't sure what it was. We we're fishing for tuna, but this was on the bottom and it came up. Yeah, buddy. Woo! I hooked up a hooked fish. Up. Keep reeling faster, girl. Kiki's reeling it in. See any color yet? No, not yet. Oh, there's a black fish. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a black fish. 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 Yeah, there's a black Oh my gosh, I told you it was tiny. What is it? I don't, I don't know. know. Some kind of jack. <laughs> <laughs> Doo doo footage. Get right, get right. I know you haven't had a gun. Doubled up, baby! Oh man. No, no, no. Go get it, go get it. It's heavy. Go get it, go get it. Here, here. Oh, here. Here, I'll grab it. Here, 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 here. I got, I got this. Oh, man. Bro, I was counting down. I was right when I hit one. It started screaming. I was about to start recording. I'm good. I'm good. Let's turn the music down. No fish jumping. No fish splashing. Two tuna. Two tuna. Hey, Cap. Is the pass real quick? I think I got this guy working it with the belly buster on here. Huh? Woo! Dawson had to put in the rod holder. He's kicking. Dawson's got his PB skip. Yeah. Oh, right there. Splash on the surface. Nice big skipjack. What's it? I think so. <laughs> what do you mean, nice big? <laughs> yeah, that thing's purple. 
No, you're good. All right. He's got a skipjack. Hopefully, Dad's got a black fin. Oh, I don't want him to bury his head. There he is, skipping across the surface here. Black tuna, tuna. There's a black fin. There's a black fin. All right, bring him in. Yeah, yeah, good size. Good Woo! Size. <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh, there's a double. All right. Double black fin, here we go. He's cranking this one in. I don't think he's even gaining any line. There he is, skipping across the surface. Baby black fin. Mine's little. My, it's okay, just go on and bury his head. Keep him skipping up and then you just swing him in. Swing it in. Stop it, grab leader, swing it in. Skip jet. Yours is Jack. The face of defeat. Been a long day, but we always say the fish bite at four o'clock. Sure enough, way here we are. There. He's way out there. Like he's screaming. We just got uh, top poppers. Oh, he's got a lot of line out. We got the belly buster too. This is a good tool. You get these rod end things. It helps so they're not digging into your digging into your waist. What's that? I, I don't know. They're like maybe 15, 20 bucks at Bass Pro. You can pretty much get them at any any fishing tackle shop. Should sell them, but make a world of difference because those butt ends are pretty pretty uh jarring in your skin and you know it really just gives you that leverage without really digging into your waist or your hip or whatever however you feel comfortable on the we're still out here at the 409 we've been out here all day we've been losing tackle we've been uh learning struggling but uh seems to be in the fish That's mono. So uh, we're getting close. Birds are still over there. I don't know if you guys can see that in the video. We've got tons of birds. He's gonna swing it in for him. So uh, he's getting close. See how big this guy is. Hopefully it's another another good sized tuna. Got two in the cooler already. He's looking to make some sushi tonight, some sashimi. I see him down there. Yeah, I don't know. Yep. Tuna. Yep. Another quick brain and bleed of a black fin. Cut that membrane right in my body. You can put a fish on your rod, dog. Yeah, for real. I want to put it on the rod. We're going to bug when everybody else is holding the top that big root rod. This thing's made over here. here. I'll get it. Here we are, trolling through 150 birds. The lines out with the blue and pink plugs. Some of these fish are going airborne, blowing up, flying fish in the surface. About to double up, right there in the air. Big frigate bird diving down. That guy. They can follow no, these big frigate birds. Watch, watch this, get ready, guys. They follow the fish. Hopefully, it's gonna get hit hard. Some big fish right now. I don't think he was. I think the lines would have started going off already. Until next time. This is it. Back. No, don't say that. Been stranded for about two hours. We got help no. coming. I know it smelled the first time, but it doesn't smell like what you to me. We had some mahi on the boat. Doesn't smell like full now. We got the trolling motor, spot lock. We're surviving, baby. Whoa. The string of lights is moving faster than the speed of light up there. I get the aliens. All right, here we are, day three. This is it, ocean adventures. Uh, we had a wild day yesterday. Had some technical difficulties. Um, made it back to the dock pretty late, but thankfully we made it back. So um, we didn't get a lot of footage in the afternoon. Obviously we were taking care of some 
troubles that we ran into, um, but we worked through it, we got back, that's part. So now we're out here in the morning, we're at the grass flats right out of Vaca Cut, and uh, we're trying to load up on some pinfish. We're gonna go out to the reef. It looks like the winds are picking up out here, so the seas are building. So we're gonna stay close to shore today. Um, gonna go out to the reef, maybe get in, try to shoot some grouper, um, catch some yellowtail. And we also need to check our lobster spots because tomorrow is lobster mini season. So uh, we always like to go out the day before, kind of check our spots, check our holes, make sure we know where the lobsters are. So when we get up early in the morning tomorrow, we can get out there and uh, get where we need to go, load up on our lobster because that's really the main reason why we're here. So this fishing is all just extra. So uh, thanks again for tuning in uh, as we get into some more action and start putting fish in the cooler. We'll turn this camera back on and kind of talk through it. Oh yeah, yeah Colton's hooked up, Colton's hooked up on a nice motors. guy. Pull. Yeah, yeah. Around. Oh, go, go, go. It's got some good size to it, looks like. I, I think it's a mutton. Something was chasing it, looked oh, like. Sharks, 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 he just got a yellowtail small. She's gonna show you how to get catch and release. Shake it hard. There you go. Clean release. Fish swims away. What do you think, Kiki? Easy? Here we are. This is it. Checking out the holes. Brian just shot a little snapper. A little baby, but a headshot though. Stone cold killer right there. Dawson's about to noodle a uh, keeper grouper. Here we go. We'll be back. To the kitchen uh, tonight the cook we're gonna do is uh, the yellow-eyed snapper that we caught down in the Keys um, when we were drifting the humps it's a pretty rare fish we've never caught one before so we were drifting I think it was about four to five hundred feet deep and um, dropped a giant jig all the way down to the bottom hooked it up and um, so now we're gonna eat it so we're gonna go back to Old Faithful do it with um, some panko uh, seasoning um, as well as coconut flakes, we'll mix that in. And then I also have coconut flour. I've heard some really good things about coconut flour, so I'm gonna mix a little bit of that into the mixture with the panko and the coconut, and uh, then we're gonna fry it in some butter. So uh, I'm excited, I hear it's really good, so I'm really interested to see if it tastes anything different from American Red Snapper or any of the other snappers out there, so. All right, we got our breading mixture put together here. We put the panko in, the coconut flakes, and then we also put some of this coconut flour in, mixed it all together. Um, we have our egg wash, got our three eggs in here. I'm gonna put some milk in there, and then we are going to get the fish ready. So first thing I'm gonna do is get some paper towels out, because what I wanna do after I cut it and get it out of the freezer bag, I want to make sure it's dried really, really good and also check and make sure that all the bones were taken out. So I think they were. I'm not sure who filleted this guy, but I think it was me. Um, maybe, maybe not. I just want to make sure there's no bones. I hate when there's bones in fish. It really uh, frustrates me. It makes the experience pretty poor in, in my eyes. I don't want to have to chew as though I'm looking for bones and uh, last thing you want to do is eat 
a fish bone. So get that nice and dry. I'm gonna put some milk in the eggs and get that ready. And then I might just slice these again and kind of make them into um, halves of, of what they are now. And we'll do four pieces. And we'll cut this other filet. Then we're gonna put these into the egg wash and let them kind of soak that up a little bit before we put it into the breading. And we got the cast iron going as well. I always like to preheat my cast iron. Um, it takes a little bit of time for that to disperse the heat evenly. So you really want your heat to be evenly dispersed on your cast iron. So I always like to get that going beforehand. It's starting to smoke a little bit. So I'll turn that heat down just a little bit and then we'll melt some butter in there and get ready for the fish. All right, while we're waiting for our fish fillets to absorb some of that egg wash, I'm gonna make uh, my Old Faithful dip. I know you guys have seen this before, but if you haven't tried it yet, I highly recommend trying it. You'll probably never wanna use anything else to dip your fish in. So honey, um, this is a local farmer around here, uh, Walker Farms, if you're in Southwest Florida, they, um, they have great, great honey. I usually buy these big gallons. Uh, maybe once a year, honey doesn't ever go bad. So um, almost out of this one. So I'm probably gonna have to make another trip up to get some more, but this is um, Saul Palmetto honey. So it has more of a rich, uh, almost like a syrupy or molasses flavor to it. So this is probably one of my favorite. I always get a jar of this and then I always get some of the uh, orange blossom as well that has um, pollen from all the orange trees and stuff like that so it's got a hint of orange in it but this is my favorite salt palmetto um, super good really sweet healthy honey to support your local farmers and then uh, sriracha and then obviously depending on how spicy you like things would dictate how much or how little sriracha you want to put in there mix it together and then you have a nice sweet and spicy sauce it's great for dipping fish all right the fillets have been soaking for a little bit so they should be good so drip off the excess egg wash and then right into my panko and coconut flake and coconut flour mixture and get it all nice and coated the coconut flour should actually make a nice nice little breading different from just the panko um, it'll probably adhere to it really good and uh who knows make it a little tastier hopefully but we'll find out once we get to the taste test all right our fillets are all breaded ready to rock and roll cast irons nice and hot so i'm gonna take a nice stick of butter Get a good old coating all through here. Lots of butter. It's gonna make it extra delicious. And we're gonna go in with our fillets. just about three minutes. All right, we've been going for four minutes, so we're gonna do the flip. Oh yeah. Nice and crispy. Another four minutes on this side, and we'll be ready for the taste test. Another four minutes, and I think they're done. Now this is the thinnest piece, so I'm gonna take this one off first. I might let these other ones sit on there just a little bit longer. Do a little bottom check. 
Oh yeah, it's nice and crispy. I think I'm just gonna eat it. Broke. So tender. So tender and juicy. You gotta be careful it doesn't fall apart. Alright. Here we are. Yellow eyed snapper. Alright, here we are for the taste test. Yellow eyed snapper. Coconut crusted with a little bit of the honey sriracha sauce. Hot, obviously. Talk to all your YouTube fans. Tell us what you think. It's good. Is it different than the other kind? Like does it actually have different consistency than other snappers that we eat? I don't or know. It's the same. I don't know. It's the first time we've ever had it, so I'm not really sure. The only thing that is a little bit different is um, I put coconut flour in the mixture, so that could be. The, but that's going to be the outside texture. Mm -hmm. Taste it. Yeah, that's the coconut flour. Yeah, I mean, it's really good. Coconut flour is good. It's different. It's not as like crispy as the panko and yeah, it's a little coconut little. flakes. But the fish, um, the fish is, is phenomenal. It's super light, flaky. Um, I'm going to try a little bit of a thicker one. Yeah, this is nice, a nice thick piece. I'm going to try without sauce. Wow, it's very similar to American Red Snapper, but it's a little bit different, and I think I like it more. I really like it. I think I prefer the unhealthy, just like regular coconut with like the what? unhealthy wheat flour or whatever. Well, actually, coconut flour is more healthy than regular flour. I know. It's gluten-free. That's what I just said. Oh. So you don't prefer it or you do prefer I prefer the other unhealthy. The unhealthy. Yeah, for sure. There you have it. That's well, the first. Good. So yellow-eyed snapper, it's a winner. It's definitely has a different um, taste and texture, which I think is better than American red snapper. So super good. I mean, I mean, if I kind of knew how much healthier it was, it might, it might persuade me. It's really good, but. It keeps eating it, so obviously, obviously it's No, good. there's nothing wrong with it at all. I'm just saying, like, the unhealthy one has definitely a different, like. Well, I don't usually put flour. Any yeah, but kind doesn't of flour. the. Do you use um, Italian Pen breadcrumb in it? Yeah, a little bit of Italian breadcrumb. Would bread you crumb. use that in this? No. Just, See, that's fine. Just panko. You know, when you eat that breadcrumb that's, like, really, like. Crispy. All right, so the yellow eyed snapper is a success. It's definitely superior to American red snapper. I like it more. Monica's not a big fan of the coconut flour, so next time we won't use the coconut flour, but super good. Highly recommend it. If you can get down deep and bring these up, you're definitely gonna enjoy it. So thanks again for tuning in. Um, stay tuned next week for uh, part three, when we actually get into the lobster for lobster menu week. So any comments, leave them below. Uh, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. We appreciate it. And uh, until next time, this is it.